Hello, good morning. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Um, before I start with my webinar, allow me to thank uh, Dr. Mylene, Anna Mylene Napipidad, for inviting me to be your resource speaker about research no, in the new normal. And I would like also to thank the staff and the head of Department of Education, School Division's Office of Puerto Pensisa City. I hope everybody is okay. How are you today? Um, teachers, um, laban lang tayo. So allow me to share my screen. Okay, the title of my webinar is all about qualitative and quantitative research in the new normal. By the way, I'm Dr. Mark Abadiano. I'm the owner, CEO of Abadiano's Research Analysis and Services, and also recently the president of IMRAD, International Multidisciplinary Research Advocacy and Development Incorporated. So this will be the topic outline for today. Uh, introduction of qualitative or quanti later. And I will, we will differentiate between qualitative and what is quantitative research. Then some study designs in qualitative research. The method of data collection and how you handle qualitative data. And also analyzing qualitative or quantitative data and how you present it um, in a form of qualitative research presentation may be action or depends on your design. So let's start with the introduction. So basically, uh, even before the old normal, Teachers and scientists are more comfortable with quantitative research, where into the quantitative methods deals with the collection and processing numerical data. It's actually answering questions how often, to what extent, how much, how many, but cannot answer questions on why, how, and in what way. Quant quantitative data can answer magkano ba, hanggang saan, hanggang uh, magkano ba yung measurement nito ng mga bagay-bagay. But hindi siya maka-answer ng mga questions, bakit, how, in what way, bakit ganito yung mga nangyayari sa society natin, so on and so forth. Qualitative research can provide insight, which is not possible to elucidate with purely quantitative data. A means of exploring and understanding the meaning of individuals or groups ascribed to social or human behavior, human problems. It study human behavior and social world. Like for example, uh, there are participants in Puerto, I remember I have advices from Holy Trinity University. They're studying about uh, ethnography, about taot, na, taot bato, about koyonon, and all of, all of this stuff. In quantitative, we cannot uh, elucidate. We cannot we cannot explain it in in numbers, but in qualitative, we can understand the human behavior, the ethnic tribe of the 12 tribes of Palawan, it helps us understand the world in which we live and why things are the way they are. Bakit ganito yung mga ginagawa ng mga addict, for example, ng mga prostitute, if you're studying about phenomenology or ethnography. So yun, 
and then sa mga tribo, so on and so forth. So qualitative research answered questions, why people behave the way they do? I remember uh, one of the study of my good friend from Silliman University, a uh, psychologist. Uh, it's all about uh, prostitute. Huh? And then even yung prostitute na yun, kahit na naging mayaman na siya, may akwam na siya, yung akwam yung mama. So, lingwa kaya ng mga uh, LGBT, kahit na may akwam siya, uh, patuloy pa din siyang nagpo-prostate kasi yan yung parang normal way niya to get things done. Babalik at babalik pa rin siya saan siya na uh, nanggalit. Then how opinions and attitudes are formed, especially uh, in politics, no? uh, uh, attitudes towards uh, millennials, zillennials, feeling millennial, millennial, and different uh, groups in, this, in our society. How people are affected by the events that go on around them, especially in times of uh, crisis. Um, maraming mga anxiety, depression na maranasan ng mga participants or people. How and why cultures have developed. So, pwede historical research, pwede din siyang mga ethnography. We're, we're, we're studying about culture. Then, the difference between social groups. This is what I've said a while ago na ba't iba yung society natin? It's not it's not anymore black and white, male and female. Uh, all are brown snow. The world is a mix of different colors, especially in the spectrum of LGBTQ++. Ang dami nila, spectrum niya. And you have to respect that. Not all people around the world are straight. So may mga straight, may mga ganito, may mga even religions have different... Uh, social groups and also races, race, race, I mean race, ethnic groups. No? So this is the difference between quantitative and qualitative research. Again, a qualitative research is subjective. It's merely concerned with opinion, experiences, and feelings of individuals. While in quantity, if you can remember with your the usual uh, research, it's more on an objective type. No? Um, in fact, in number two, it's holistic. You're going to record the, the feelings of the individuals, but in quantitative, it's reductionist. It's identify a set of variables. So basically, my questionnaire C, quantitative. Yung mga questionnaire niya ay nakaset na yes or no or in a Likert scale of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 depende sa yung mga variables niya at ano yung kukunin ng mga uh, problema the answer sa statement of the problem niya later. Level of satisfaction ba? Level of readiness? Basta it's, it's a set of the variables. Well, quality, it's phenomenological. Studying phenomenon. Then <clears throat> quantitative, it's scientific and also experimental in such a way that uh, like in the elementary school or in high school, senior high school, um, we have to test hypothesis, huh? um, testing theories through experiment. Um, then qualitative is naturalistic. Ano yung ma-emerge ng data? Uh, in real time, as long as you interview it and record it with permission, ano yung lalabas, yun yung resulta. While in quantitative, it's contrived. I mean, we really don't know if the answer or the one who answered with your questioners are real people or someone just answered it 
in behalf of them. We also have inductive and deductive. Qualitative is inductive. It's generate theories. Basically, qualitative can generate theories, while quanti is more on test proposed theories. Small sample. Uh, it's more on qualitative. Uh, as long as there's a point of saturation, um, samples can be in the interview. You can collect it, extract it from interview or observation. While in quantitative, it's usually survey questionnaires and doing representative sample. The results of qualitative is generalizability. Generalizability is not an aim. So, on the other hand, quantitative is generalizability is an important aim. So, yun yung mga difference ng quali at saka quality. So let's go back again to qualitative research designs. Uh, there are a lot of qualitative research designs, but these are the four major types of qualitative. These are phenomenology, ethnography, grounded theory, and case study. Let's start with phenomenology. A phenomenology is a study of a phenomena describing something that exists as part of the world. Phenomena might be, for example, an event, no? a situation, an experience, or a concept. Example of this is back pain in the modern world, in the new normal, kasi hindi na tayo the usual na face-to-face. -face. Usually, all the teachers and students would experience back pain. Kasi long hours of sitting, and medically speaking, that would cause back pain if we don't stand for a longer time. We just sit for a longer time. And then there's another example. One of the study of my friend from Silliman again, uh, she studied about the taboo group sex situation in, in the Philippines. Her study uh, I remember, uh, composed of different class of the society. May mga showbiz personality, may mga politics, at saka it's all around the Philippines. And makikita mo talaga sa study niya na there was a phenomenon that all about uh, this kind of discrete group sex happening in the world, in the Philippines, not just in the world. No? Imagine, no? And then also the famous, uh, we can see it in the mainstream media, the extramarital affair. No? May mga teams na may mga patnubay dapat sa mga parents na guidance about seeing these matters on the net, the new normal, and also in the mainstream media about kabit-kabit serie, no? Um, ano pa ba? May it be homo or hetero. <clears throat> May mga pangyayaring ganyan, no? Um, I remember. Excuse me. I remember my, I will not mention, one of my relatives in Mindanao, yung case niya is pinagpalit siya sa kanyang asawa sa isang tibo, sa isang tomboy. So, so sad. Uh, but he moves. He already moved on. May mga ganun talaga mga pangyayari. But we cannot understand why it's happening. Or the other way around, the usual is really extramarital affair. And we can see it in the new normal, especially uh, we're, we're into the social media, eh, maraming mga tolfo, pagano'n, KMGS na mga cases about, about this thing, extra marital affair. It begins with acknowledgement that there is a gap in our understanding, especially if you are too in close with your normal way, no? And then it, it, it acknowledges that there is really a problem uh, and there's a little gap 
in our understanding about this matter, it may not necessarily provide definite explanation, but it does raise awareness and increase insight. And this is phenomenology. Then let's have another one, ethnography. The term means portray of people. When I see portray of people, I can see the one channel in a cable, it's National Geographic and watching the, the Amazon, the, the tribe of Africa or Thailand or Muslims. These are methodology for descriptive studies of cultures and people. Um, sabi ko nga kanina, yung, yung six advices ko sa HTU, they were studying more on the tribe of Palawan. Taot ba to? Ano pa ba yun? Kuyunon? And a lot more, as far as I can remember. And there's cultural parameter. is suspected of affecting, this is an example. Uh, cultural parameter is suspected of affecting the population, population's response to care or treatment. There are certain groups or tribes. What I can remember, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Sabadista uh, Bayon or Born Again, whatever? Is that? I, don't, I don't remember anymore. Uh, correct me. Uh, it, one sect of the Christian religion, bawal talaga mag extract ng dugo. Ma hospital yung anak. Yung anak niya inis na hospital sa. May sakit, dengue ba yun? Malaria. Kasi bawal sa religion nila na magigsak ng dugo to get uh, blood from her, from the patient. And then needed na talaga magabuno or magigsak ng dugo. Pero bawal sa religion niya. So nangyari, hindi naabutan, namatay yung bata. So ganun. There are some cultural para parameter. And then some certain tribe in Mindanao also, there are a lot of studies that, and then it's against uh, some uh, laws in the world, no? like isang matandang leader or nakapag-asawa ng napakawal young na babae, inasawa niya yung mga uh, because that's their, their culture. They can do that in their culture. But there are moves from the from, from, from our laws, policies, to, to revisit that thing about children, no? not, not to marry young girls. Data collection includes formal and informal interview on several occasions and observation. It requires extensive field work by the researchers. So, mabusisi yung mga dapat gawin, like I remember yung mga advice ko, they went to mountains and rivers and live with the ethnic people, for the IPs, the indigenous people, tribe. It is extremely time consuming, so dapat may pasensya ka na matas na stay. The data analysis of ethnography is emic. It means uh, the researcher interpret data from their perspective and the population understand. Results are ex expressed as they are expressed by the subject themselves. So ano yung berbatim? The corpus of data, the body of data should be coming from them, not from your opinion. These studies might be problematic when researchers are not familiar with social norms and language. So, kaya dapat, you makikoordinate ka sa local, mga leaders nila. Kasi may mga certain uh, rituals or norms na dapat may follow Like for example, magpatay ka ng, mag-alay ka ng mga dugo ng mga manok for, for their anitos and anitas. And some study when you are in, in in other countries, you should follow their uh, rules. No, like in Thailand, you are not allowed to pinpoint uh, the picture of the 
prime minister. So it's, it's a big no-no. And in, an, in a Muslim area, may mga bagay-bagay na bawal talaga. No? May linya para sa babae, may linya para sa lalaki, pila. But um, ganun. When you are in Rome, be a Roman. When you are in Greece, be a Greek. So the higher level of phenomenology is grounded theory. I use this grounded theory during my dissertation. And then the main feature of grounded theory, it generates a theory. No? You can generate new ideas, new theory, and the collection of data analysis of data about certain phenomena. It goes beyond phenomenology as the explanation are genuine knowledge, new knowledge and are used to develop theories. So I used uh, before in my dissertation, uh, data collection techniques are used in literature review. I have literature review, documentary analysis, interviews, and observation. Not just one interview, but several. The key features of grounded theory or GT constant comparative analysis, simultaneous collection, and analysis of data. Then we also have case studies. Might be a qualitative or quantitative. Pwede siyang mag-interview, pwede ka rin mag-survey ng data. For example, sa case study, you're studying about institutions. School A, school B, school C, school, school D. And then you're looking into the leadership style of which uh, school head, no? Ganun, ganun. Yung, ganun yung mga case study. So let's move on to the methods of collecting qualitative data. Usually in qualitative data, you can have interviews, focus group discussion, and observations. Data collection, again, is time consuming. You need to record no? the, the conversations or interview. Basically, if it's quantity, uh, it's structured interviews, limited range of responses of the questioners. Kasi yes or no lang siya, tsaka like it's game. Uh, in quali, it's usually semi-structured interviews or focused in interviews. It should be series of open-ended questions. It provides opportunities to both researchers and respondents to discuss certain topics in more details. We also have qualitative interviews are semi-structured or unstructured, usually. Then also we discuss about focus group discussion. Uh, sa interview, in-depth interview, individual lang yan. Sa focus group, parang membro-membro siya. No? This can be used when resources are limited, yung budget mo, napunta ng lugar-lugar. You need to have budget and then magpapakain pa ka for snacks. Uh, for example, sa mga tricycad, yung mga medical driver, yung mga participants mo. So you need to give them a little snacks no? like that. It's okay. It is desirable to collect the views of several people within the subpopulation group. Subgroup. The group interaction among participants has the potential for greater insights to be developed. So may, may inter the interaction ng mga participants, that would be great. Basically, in FGD, the characteristics of a focus group is usually 6 to 10 people in, in a group. You can use form pressure groups. Then it, it requires certain skills like Facilitation, facility, you're a, you should be a good facilitator, moderator, listener, and you should be observant and observant and analytical skills. No? Then we also have observation. You can observe certain people or the environment, and you can do it note taking also and also through video. Uh, techniques of collecting data, uh, written description, and then also video recording. No need to take notes. Review nyo na lang yung mga interview niyo. But you need to ask permission first and then tell them that the ethics of uh, anonymity, yung mga mukha nila, 
tatabunan mo, i-blurred mo, yung voice nila is demodulated. Also, photographs can be a good way of data collection and data con uh, documentation. <clears throat> in handling qualitative research data, you can transcribe it in qualitative research. So tape or video recording analysis is okay. A uh, long time ago, when hindi pa yung uso yung mga cell phones, uh, the researcher before is they play back the tape, yung mga cassette tape. Ngayon, easy na lang. In just one tap, i-rewind, rewind mo na lang yun sa cell phone mo. Who should do transcribing? You or your research assistant? And then, just to skip this one. Um, there are steps in doing content analysis if you are into content analysis. So anyway, I'll give the, the source material to Dr. Mylene. We cannot uh, do it in just one setting in just an hour. So you, you can read all these steps later. Then in doing the data analysis, there are there are manuals, you can do manual and also software packages such as Atlas, Invivo, and Mood IST. So they can form teams, categorize your, your narratives into common teams and sub-teams. Uh, sub and you can also do it on your own no? through Microsoft Word, WordArt, so on and so forth. Then you can present the teams and results accordingly. <clears throat> so these are example of teams, no? Uh, for example, health issues for young people. This is when I interview about health issues for young people, then ito yung lumabas, major category, sexual health and drugs. Then the minor categories of it is safe sex, pregnancy, sexual behavior, smoking, alcohol, and illicit drug. Uh, barriers to accessing services, may isa namang study. Then the lack of knowledge and attitudes are the major categories. Basically in, in civil service or may it be private or public sector, ito yung mangyayari, for example, uh, talking about Wi-Fi connection, the services available. Is it available always? Not at all. No, maraming mga runs at saka complaints from the customer. And understanding perceptions, unbeliefs, peer pressure, expectation of the staff. No, maraming natulpo nito dahil napakasungit naman ito. May be private at saka public ng mga empleyado. So the barriers to access and service. You don't deserve what you pay for. Ngayon, usually ganun yung mga complaint nila. So, talking about qualitative data collection, there are procedures and also data instruments needed. Data collection is the process of gathering and measuring information on variable of interest. So, ito yung mga sinasabi ko kanina. Uh, FGD interview, so on and so forth. Then also observation. There are steps in observation. You have to read all of this stuff when I share it to Dr. Mylene and you can download it for free. You can do interview. There are types of interview, especially in the new normal. So since we are in the new normal, this is all uh, available. We can do it now uh, via Skype or Meet or Google for as long as you follow the, the rules, no? the ethics that this interview will be confidential. You're not allowed to post it in social media. So you can also do personal interviews, but for now, it's not allowed by IATF kasi meron pa si COVID virus, COVID-19. 
So what we can do now in the new normal is telephone interview, group interviews in in group chats, no? group group videos, video chat, individual interviews through online, and in that interviews personal not allowed. So in the new normal, we can do Skype, we can do Meet, Google, or whatever social media platforms for communication. For as long again, for as long as you follow the protocol of research. Uh, hindi modulate yung voice, hindi nyo i-mention yung name nila, especially. Uh, uh, may mga, I remember one of the study of my friend. Instead of participant, kung one to mga pangalan nila, sa akin, usual participant, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, one study of mine is Pokemon 1, Pokemon 2. And then, yung sa friend ko is, yung, uh, kasi mga promiscuous yung study niya, group sex. She used uh, names from cars. No? Toyota, Honda, Hunchback, whatever. But should be she? Yeah. Yan. And then, sample interview guide. First, stage one is thematize. You design. Stage three is you interview, the interview proper. So you should have interview guide, by the way. You design an interview guide. You transcribe, analyze, verify, and report. No, the last one is report. So I have here a sample of GT and data collector. So it should have been IMRAD format when you publish it in international format. But usually, in an IMRED format, it's introduction. We also have methods, materials, results, and discussion. Ito yung pinapalo natin sa international journal. But in the institutions, pet DepEd, HEIs, private, maybe private or public, we have varied format no? by chapter. So parang we still follow the institutional format. In the Philippines, especially in the Philippines. <clears throat> so we're done with qualitative. So so with the quanti. Uh, again, if we are going to reverse the process, quanti is more on survey. The data source is basically interviews and where you have used a Likert scale, a large number of respondents. In quality, it's small. It's point of saturation, 5, 10, 15, 25, okay na yun. Pero in quantity, large number of respondents, depende sa sampling design at population design. You know, then you can also use secondary data, government data, SAT score, INSAT score, count numbers or coding data into numbers. Basically, in quantity, it's no longer thematizing. It's more on hypothesis testing, correlations. I check nyo yung mga study nyo. For example, I correlate by yung ano, smoking to lung cancer. Is there a significant relationship between smoking or lung, lung cancer? Sometimes you cluster analysis so mga different types of group, no? cluster cluster analysis. Analyzing quantitative data, always good to group or visualize the data initially and check the outliers to clean up the data. May mga na, na what we call this, in Visay, it's ima. So outliers, may mga parang off tangent sa data niya. What average are you looking for? The mean, median, or mode? You can do that also. And also the spread of data, the skewness of distribution, the range, variance, and standard deviation. Ito yung usually terms ng quantitative. What are you looking for in quantity? Trying to find the signal from the noise. Generally, either a difference between within groups or correlations. Uh, depending on study, you know, like for example, I-check nyo yung mga scores no, between the groups. I-correlate. Then, choosing the right test to use. It could be parametric versus non-parametric. 
depends what sort of data you have. For example, you have interval, ratio versus nominal, ordinal, and how it is distributed. Uh, there are data, data analysis or statistician. You work with your advisor or statistician in doing this so because mathematically this is good in math also in statistics this you should put, uh, consult with your statistician and then correlation does not imply causation for example of the correlation uh, number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets this was uh, per capita cheese consumption do you think this one is correlated? No? So this was the study. So cheese consumption. So somewhat, no? somewhat correlated siya, malapit. <coughs> Number of people who drowned by falling into a pool. Ito. So there's a certain... Uh, Correlates with films Nicolas, Nicolas Cage appeared in. So there's a certain uh, significant correlation. Four films, two films, and then a number of people. Maraming nag-drown kasi nasi, na, nandun daw si Nicolas Cage. Na-relate sa kang Nicolas Cage. So may mga ganun nga mga study. Medyo weird pero they correlate Uh, interpreting test statistics, you can interpret significance level, p-value, power, and effect size. When we say significance level, a fixed probability of wrongly rejecting the null hypothesis, HO, is in fact true. Usually, it's set to 0 0.05 or 5%. And then the p-value is the probability of getting a value of the test statistics as extreme as more extreme than the observed by chance alone. If the null hypothesis H0 is true. So we will discuss this more in another webinar, especially in statistics. No? Uh, what quantitative research worry about? Is my sample size big enough? So you need to consult it with your statistician for data analysis. Have I used the correct statistical test? So these are important uh, worries. No? Have I reduced the likelihood of making type one or type two errors? Are my results generalizable? So if you go back to the qualitative, qualitative don't mind about generalizability, but in quantity, this is important. Are my results, methods, results reproducible? Am I measuring things the right way? Yeah. Baka iba yung mga na measure. Uh, not in synchronized with your SOP for study. What's wrong with quantitative research? Some things can't be measured or measured accurately. Doesn't tell you why. So if, that, if it doesn't tell you why, so it's quality. It should be quality can be impersonal, no engagement with human behaviors or individuals. Especially when you're conducting a date, uh, a research or action research, you don't do interview, you just have to uh, distribute with your research assistants or you yourself, if you have a lot of time, and then extract it. Data can be stati static. It's just a snapshot of a point in time, no dynamism. No interaction. Can tell a version of truth. Yeah, can tell a version of truth. Lies, dumb lies, and statistics. Persuasive power of numbers. So more of the numbers. No? So extracted from John Cresswell. So if we mix them up, because I'm just talking about quantity and quality, it's going to be a next method. So I will just stop here. Um, next, maybe next uh, in, uh, invitation, I will focus on the next method. Just an overview, this is the next method, a combination of quantity and quality.
So it can be quan or qual. So that is the combination of these. For now, um, I would like to end my discussion here. And if you have questions and clarification, I'm here to answer your queries as, in as much as I can. Thank you very much. At maraming salamat po sa ating lahat. Maligayang Pasko. Kahit may pandemic, tuloy pa rin ang Pasko. Salamat.